So I arrived at Madrona, 64, because Madrona were concerned that uh, they were making the fastest logic mm. and they needed an expert on interconnecting it. And um, money was flowing in uh, to get good Americans, freedom-loving Americans, to the moon. I did practical work on um, interconnecting high-speed high logic gates. The predecessor to me was Heaviside, who sent pulses down a cable from Newcastle to Denmark. Only twice in Heaviside's five volumes does he mention energy current. Mm. This is important. His great contribution was the phrase energy current. You move away from electric current, which is what flows down the wires, to mm. energy current, which is like the train going to Edinburgh, is guided by the wires. Mm. There is no precedent for energy current. Mm. Pointing said, ah, but if you want to calculate the amount of energy emitting from the battery and going along towards wherever it's burnt up, the lamp or the resistor or something, mm. you use the pointing vector. Before Heaviside and pointing, there were two fields. There was the electric field and the magnetic field. He was indicating that a battery is not desperate to to drive out electrons mm. and, and pull in holes or mm. whatever. Um, it was desperate to, to drive out electromagnetic field. In Galileo's time, your first defence was to say you'd never heard of Galileo. Mm. You know, your next defence was you'd never written anything but read anything but written by. What you saw is you saw that um, electricity is actually light and and and. Um, and that, I saw sense. it, yeah. I saw it yeah. going past me at the speed of light, not changing. Yeah. It, it, if it's a sine wave, the sine wave did not wiggle. Yeah. And this is the point. If you take a sine wave on a piece of board mm. and you move the piece, a drawing, look, yeah. drawing of a sine yeah. wave, and you move, it looks as though it's wiggling if you yeah. hide the two ends, but it's not wiggling. Mm. You, move that's along. the point. Yeah. Mm. It's a stationary, um, don't call it oscillation, a stationary waveform right. moving forward at the speed of light. Now, if mm. you go to, remember, go back to the observer, the one eye, yep. looking at a pair of wires mm. and watching something go by, don't worry about the source, don't worry about the destination. You mm. shouldn't have to. Mm. You know, if you're in the middle of the ocean, yeah. you should be able to study the behaviour of water to some degree just looking at, uh, at 10 square yards of water. Yeah. You shouldn't have to say, you know, who caused, who caused the waves, where mm. did it break on the shore, and all that stuff. Yeah. You see, you should yeah. be able to, and that's what I did, and that's the breakthrough. Mm. Because when that guy looks at mm. that stuff passing, mm. he says, at every point, mm. um, E and H should be in a fixed proportion, 377, yeah. and E to H must not change. Now, if, if the relationship doesn't change, mm. you can't have rolling. Yeah, yeah. You deduce what must be there, yeah. and and that's what we always do when we look with our eyes, mm. and we, and I see that curtain, I deduce that there's a curtain there. Right. You know, I say not. I say I'm certain there's a curtain there. I say I have a, a hypothesis that the curtain's there. Now yeah. I might be totally deluded, but I, but I do have a part of it. And what you do in science is you continue to hone more and more mm. with more experiments. 1976 was the great breakthrough when I knew I was big. And this was obviously my greatest achievement in my whole life. At that time I was age, um, quite old wasn't I? I was age, you know, 70, 41, mm. is it? Mm. Yeah, quite old. And if you, now if you read my 1994 book. Electromagnetism 1. First published in 1995. Then one night, 28th of May 1976, Walton phoned Cat and talked about a number of things how he knew he should get the sine wave out of his conceptual system, but how difficult it was to do so. Mm. How he wondered how the particle came into Faraday's law of induction. Mm. That, perhaps the law, was only an approximation and did not hold exactly at the atomic level. Cat wanted no particles introduced into the argument. Mm. Then Walton raised the point about a Faraday's law loop, you have a loop of wire, yeah. with a capacitor as part of the loop. Mm. Cat said that if instead of a C you had the end of a very long 50 ohm transmission line, it would look just like a resistor. Walton said, so that gets rid of displacement current. I'd already been censored over the glitch. I managed to publish the glitch by giving it a misleading title in 1966 in the IE Transactions on Computers. 
Time lost through gating of asynchronous logic signal pulses. It had a meaningless title, so as people wouldn't realise that it was speaking heresy. Now, I, I know at that time I was thinking, we want to slow this down. You know, you don't make more than two or three major scientific breakthroughs mm. of all history in, in a day or two, you mm. know, because it derails you, mm. actually. You, you begin to wonder about, you, you want to check the first one mm. rather than come up with the second and third. Catton Walton promptly agreed that the capacitor was a transmission line, which was then suppressed, mm. you know, and, and continued <laughs> suppressed yeah. in the year 2004, which mm. is how but long did, after? Yeah. 20, 28 years later. Yeah. Nobody knows. That did you, what sort of, uh, you predicted that at that time, you envisaged some suppression. What sort of suppression did you expect to, to get, and did it compare with what you expected, or was it worse or better? Or No, or, well, at the beginning, you assume that somebody, something will be censored for 10 years or 20 years. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I suppose after about 10 years, I thought it was likely to disappear mm. from the record because you, you were not allowed to record it, let alone mm. communicate it.